Good morning, we'll wait just another minute or two for everybody to get seated. Um, oh, um, so the QR code is going to be the end of the presentation. Yeah. And just tell them they want session one because it'll be two. And then I think I do the first couple of slides. Yeah. And you do the service. Yeah, right? yeah I do the uh, perfect one. Good morning. If I could ask everybody coming in to go and have a seat, the QR code is part of my presentation. So you will have time. Uh, an opportunity to register and send us why you're here. Or you can pass it around if you have. We do want to get started. Well, welcome and good morning. My name is Bill Miller. And I'm Laura Miller. We are not related. Uh, and uh, yeah. Um, we are both members of the full-time faculty, uh, 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 sorry, full-time salary and faculty salary and benefits committee uh, that has been appointed or uh, voted on by the faculty. Um, although this, our presentation should be uh, broadly applicable to all employees. And uh, while we are making this presentation from the perspective perspective of faculty, uh, we're an inclusive bunch looking to um, increase transparency across campus in general. That's one of the things we do. Um, and this is being recorded. So, and hopefully those of us who are online can hear. Um, and then the point of this is uh, to provide information and get feedback about benefits. Uh, we plan to have other sessions in the future that focus more on salary. Go ahead and do it. Uh, overview of our presentation, uh, introduction to our committee, then introduction to the benefits guide and Benologics, um, and to making benefits changes. Um, in particular, so that will be the information part about benefits, followed by uh, opportunities for feedback and questions. So uh, introducing you to our committee, uh, we, uh, we're a relatively new committee. We started meeting in February 22, meeting every other week during the academic year. So we have had some good meetings, plenty of good meetings, actually. But certainly, uh, we know this is a big topic. And we have a lot to do. Uh, members that are here, uh, if I could just quickly ask you to raise your hand or stand. I see Rick. I know Mary's here. I saw uh, Angelina. Uh, can you guys raise your hand? Rick? Yep. Yeah. Mary? Angelina? She was here. She was here. All right. Any other members that I missed? I apologize. Derek. Derek, thank you. Uh, and uh, yes, and so we've been meeting um, every other week since February. Go ahead. Uh, purposes, and these are from the uh, Faculty Senate uh, guide that put us together, representing uh, full time and adjunct faculty members um, and work closely with the uh, faculty senate to make recommendations to them, develop appropriate proposals. We still see ourselves as being at the beginning of this work, though this session is one of the first concrete things we've done. We also presented to the faculty senate at their first meeting in October. Um, present uh, proposals to the faculty senate, uh, present and promote uh, all these proposals, monitor status, and you'll see some of that in our um, later in this presentation. And uh, sort of two things that we've come to is that uh, there's not a lot of information, in our opinions at least, about how faculty incentive and benefits are decided, how uh, an and, and involvement from faculty and all of this. So sort of two unofficial purposes that we've given ourselves, and certainly I, I'm interested in, is to increase transparency with regards to faculty salary and benefits processes and to increase faculty involvement. That's ours. We would love to see all employee involvement in these decisions increase. 
So we actually sent out a survey in the spring and received over 200 responses from both part-time and full-time faculty at the college. We were trying to find out what folks knew about their benefits, whether they knew how to access them, uh, as well as we asked questions related to salary. So we did find that when we asked the question about, do you know what your benefits are, how to access them, we had 52 respondents saying yes, and 47 said no. So we felt like it would be helpful for us to have this session today and future se sessions to just kind of get into the benefits, um, solicit feedback from you all, and any comments, questions, suggestions. We really want to also be here listening and taking in you know, what you're saying and what you're saying that you need. So we did find that in terms of satisfaction, 33% of people that responded were neutral about their current benefits, which I thought was interesting. I didn't know what to make of that, but that was what we got. 20% uh, said satisfied, 15 unsatisfied, 10% very unsatisfied, and 13% just said basically, well, I don't know what all of my benefits are. I want more information. So that was how the results turned out for that question. And so uh, while I was getting information for this together, I, I, I sort of went through the process of seeing what I could find about the benefits. And uh, first place I started was the uh, benefits guide. And uh, this is something that you see during the open enrollment period, certainly. I know I saw a number of emails, which I was very appreciative from uh, what was then, I think, Human Resources is now uh, ECT, Equity Culture and Talent, if I have it. Although I think we still get a lot of emails from Human Resources, but that's just to be uh, understood. Um, and then, so it lays out all the different things that we have for benefits. And uh, I've gone ahead and put green boxes around the ones that we're going to focus on and, and also the ones, the biggest parts of this, and, and also what the college pays for. Right. And, um, and so we're going to, when we get to the end of the presentation, we have, and we've already started passing out the, the bulk of that benefits guide. So we can actually, you can see what your benefits are. You can see what co-pays are. And you can, and that can give us a chance to offer feedback about those benefits and your interaction with them. So, um, but the next thing I wanted to go over was Benelogic, which is within uh, mypgcc.edu when you're logging. One of the boxes in there is Benelogic. And when you open that, uh, this, is, this is actually mine. This is what I see. And uh, I went to benefits details, and that's going to be the next slide. And I mean, it's, I, I uh, am very happy to see that it's pretty clear what all of the my benefits are from here, and um, not only um, what the benefit is, how much uh, I'm paying for that, um, and uh, go ahead and advance the next one. And then what I did was I paired this with from Owl Link, another one of the mypgcc.edu um, logins. There's a when if you go under employee, you can see total compensation. And so at least for my benefits, uh, you can see I'm taking the dental. You can see the employee cost and the employer cost uh, for each of these benefits. And uh, the employer costs are quite considerable, in fact. And that was something that I learned about through this process. Um, you can see, though, that I um, did waive medical insurance. I get it through my wife. She has lower premiums. So uh, that was our choice. Um, and uh, go ahead and flip to the next one. And so I'm going to kind of put these together here to just talk about at least the benefits that I'm doing right now. So uh, what the employer pays and what the employee pays for the uh, dental benefits. And then next, uh, oh, these are animations. So next, yeah. um, the basic life insurance that we get that uh, is under the uh, uh, you will see that I pay, or we pay, nothing for it, but that um, it does cost a considerable amount for the college. One more, please. Yes. And then long-term disability insurance. And uh, it's actually pretty substantial. Uh, and I think it depends on my age. And stuff. Um, as well, but um, anyway, so, and they cover these two benefits 100%, which is great. And, you know, I, 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 this is the kind of information that I didn't know until I made this presentation. 
I sort of felt around and had some information about it. Um, and go ahead and go on to the next slide. Yeah. And so this is actually what you see in the benefits guide. And this is what I sort of went in and put together as far as costs. So for example, in the benefits guide, if you look at Kaiser, um, single, so you pay for single person, two people or family, you can see that single, uh, depending upon how, whether you do 20 or 26 pays, let's do 26 say. If you have employee, employee plus one, that's two people or family, you can see your deductions from your paychecks each time. All I've done is add those up for bonus. And uh, one of the things I figured out, and this is, uh, I think, advertised on the uh, human resources page for the college, is that for all of these, the college pays 80%, which again, we will find is pretty good, even compared to other colleges in Maryland. And we'll have a direct comparison with Montgomery College coming up. Um, but that for me, I was interested in the fact that depending upon what benefits you get, so if you're getting a family benefit, then you're paying $5,000 for the coverage of that family, and the college is paying $20,000. And these are, these are real numbers. This is, these, these come out of the college budget. And these are, you know, if you get, this is Kaiser, this is Care First PPO, and I chose this one for health. I mean, the health benefits are all the most expensive portion of what's going on here. But uh, Kaiser, I think, was the, the least expensive by a little bit. Care First PPO was the most. And so these are real numbers that we're looking at here. Again, just awareness, information about what's going on with our benefits and how much we're paying, how much the college is paying. Go ahead and do the next slide. Um, this is a summary and comparison of benefits that we get at PGCC to Montgomery College. Um, they have their benefits guide online as well, so I could make direct comparisons. You can see a um, couple things. Uh, first off, you'll notice that all the numbers are higher for PGCC than for Montgomery College. It might be close, 75% for some of them, um, but we get 80% and even 100%. And let's see, yeah. So, uh, and these are sort of, we talked about health, I did some analysis of that dental vision, um, and then both of them have tuition waivers for employees and family members, um, the employee assistance program, which I'm not talking too much about, but uh, they're both covered as well. And a couple of differences that you can see. One is Montgomery College faculty actually have to pay for parking. Uh, it's not, it's a nominal fee, but uh, still it's something. And then, uh, you know, we're very interested in full-time and part-time faculty benefits. And part-time faculty at Montgomery College can get health benefits at the same rate for single person, not to or family, but they can get the same benefits that uh, we can that that, that full-time faculty can get for a single person. And uh, having talked to part-time faculty, I think that's an important thing to know an important thing that we could do. Next slide. Um, and then, so as I was uh, sort of gathering more information, I also learned a little bit, and this is from a meeting with Sabrina Thomas, and uh, who uh, was kind enough, we went over these, uh, except for this slide, which is just from our talk earlier in the speech. Um, so there's a, a currently a request for proposal open for the benefits that I'm talking about. And uh, you can see exactly what it is if you go to that link. Uh, all of the, the most important benefits, most expensive ones. But what I learned and what Sabrina shared with me is that these benefits are on a five-year cycle. Uh, that it involves a three-year contract plus two one-year renewals. Uh, she shared with me that Care First and Kaiser have been the health plans offered. And I think you said for 20 plus years, um, so my understanding of that is that's probably not going to change. Uh, you also gave me some other information that if these ever were to change, they look at which doctors are covered to make sure that 95% of the doctors are the same, something like that. So, so, you know, there's a lot of thought that does go into this system. 
Um, the request for proposal was put out uh, earlier this month. There's oral presentations and discussion sessions uh, in December. And the decision makers are the benefits team and the VP admin and finance, uh, Ms. Terry uh, So, And what I, so as two of our unofficial um, purposes, I am interested in having more feedback from faculty, from employees in this decision process. And now seems like a perfect time to engage in this. But we're working, so that's that's just my opinion. And um, anyway, so I learned a lot about benefits. I'm sharing that with you. I think, is there more? I think we're pretty much done, except for the information part. Oh, no, so one more part. Making changes to benefits in Benelogic. So um, this, uh, during open enrollments, is pretty straightforward. You just log in, click on the benefit that you'd like to change. One piece of information for me on the next slide is if you're outside of open enrollment, what are reasons to uh, make a change? And they have a whole list of them. Um, and in particular, since I get health benefits through my wife, I, I learned that if her benefits change at any point during the year, I can use the uh, spouse loss of coverage, which is really change of coverage as well, in order to do it outside of the open enrollment time. Which, anyway, I think, um, and I really want to thank Sabrina and Gina, who I both worked with, to put some of the uh, parts of this presentation together and for their sharing information with me. So thank you. Um, and then uh, I think there's one more to this part, maybe. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, if you have any questions about benefits, uh, this was uh, suggested by Eugenia. Um, so uh, make an appointment at this website and then follow up uh, through email with the person you're making an appointment with about your question, concern, or need. And uh, I, this is something I learned by going through this process. If you put comments, there's a section for comments in there. Um, the person you're making the appointment with doesn't get the comments. And so that's important because then you, you, you know, it's there, but they don't get them anyway. So that's why following up with uh, through email and um, in working with um, Regina and uh, Sabrina and all the members of Human Resources ECT, um, that way they can handle your question as uh, easily as possible. And efficiently. Do you want to show them how to get to you? Well, so a uh, quick survey then. So how many people know already how to get into their uh, something like Benelogic, the benefits page? How many people would like to, more information about that? Yes, okay. I think that'd be a great idea. Um, so if you go to my PGCC, <laughs> I believe it's right here. There's a button in the portal. You click there and it will pull up everything. So you can, I've even done, um, <laughs> click on make a report and it'll give you everything. You can have it all in one place. There are tools here, your profile you can change. Resources, the benefits guide we passed out is here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, help. What else? Enrollment summary, benefits history. So, yeah, it's all here. And there's also support if you're having issues with the website right here. So that's kind of logic. And then, <clears throat> what's the next one? We're looking for make an appointment, right? So, Make an appointment, yes. And that is walking through that. So if you go back to the PowerPoint for a second. Oh, just click. Yeah. So here is, yes, here's everyone in the department. And then Booking appointments right there. there it is. Yeah. So you click there and you'll see. Whichever applies to you. You have right. your benefits consultation. 
and then find the day and time. Question. Yeah. How would someone get to this directly from the website without the call book? What keywords would you type in search for? Are we just typing in benefits? I think even in Google, probably in the, uh, the search session, it, uh, my PGCC, I would guess. Oh, oh you mean for this page? Here, yeah, this page. Yeah, uh, I would do uh, equity, culture, and talent, contact us. Um, contact us. Oh, it's here, here as well. Yeah. Did I answer your question? Yes, um, equity, culture, and talent. Yeah, so I think there is a wealth of information. Oh, yes, good. Quick question going back to Morgana County. Are they covering 75% instead of like 80 because they are covering um, part time benefits? Good yeah. question. So yeah. the question was just so, um, part time benefits. So is Montgomery College covering 75%? Are they covering slightly lower percentage because they're also covering part time benefits? And uh, so the first thing I would say is I'm not sure. I know that um, those are negotiated benefits because they have faculty union, uh, separate faculty unions for full-time and part-time faculty at Montgomery. That's, and it's just Montgomery College, not all of Montgomery College. Um, and um, so I think, so it's a great question. There's a lot to say about it. Um, I know that in my experience, so at my former college where we also had a faculty union, the discussions are, okay, in one way, and this is not totally true, but in one way, if you do pay more for benefits in one area, you may have less for others. If you do pay more in salary in some areas, you may have less for benefits in other areas, right? Because in the end, the money that's coming into the colleges, although Montgomery College probably has a better budget than most counties, is my understanding. But we do pretty well. Um, anyway, but so yes, it's a very good question. And it's a question that I think all employees, including full and part-time faculty, should be allowed to give feedback on how these decisions are made. But yes, it, it's to answer your question, yes, it could be. These are the choices that somebody is making on our behalf. And I would say we do have we we have really nice benefits. I mean, um, and then the question is, are these the benefits that we want? Yeah. Well, currently, how are the decisions made on benefits and incentives? Good question. So, currently, how are decisions made? So, uh, the so to the best of my knowledge, and I'm still figuring this out. The human resources benefits team meets with um, right. So, the decision makers are the benefits team and uh, Ms. Uh, Terry McCoke Charles, who's the VP of Admin and Finance. Uh, at PGCC, they uh, get the request for proposal uh, from a company that brings the prices for Care First and uh, all the benefits, but the biggest one is Care First and Kaiser. They look at what the costs are going to be, what the premiums are. And uh, in the past, when I've done this, they've also looked at how to set the co pays. And I don't you know, because there you can set co-pays for appointments at slightly different, so you can have slightly different premiums. I don't know if that's part of the decision process here, um, but that, but as far as I know, and if anybody has any new information other than that, um, the decisions are made by the benefits team uh, in consultation with uh, uh, Terry Bacocci. So is the host for this committee to be an active participant in making the decision, or? assisting in making the decision is the hopes for this committee to be active in making this decision yes okay. i mean that, that's that's what we would love to see right. it's a process and uh but but this seems like the perfect time to get involved in this process since these decisions are being made. and so that's we we in putting this presentation together i haven't put all of this before our full even faculty salary and benefits committee, but that is the direction we're moving, I would say. Is that safe to say, Laura? Yeah. 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 Um, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of time, I think, that connection a lot from 
Well, that can't be sustained for quite a few years. Did you say you cannot benefit? Can I cannot access Benelux? Yeah. 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 No, and I think that's so that speaks to the difference in benefits between part time and full time uh, faculty. Um, but that is exactly the kind of information that we want to carry forward is can uh, part time faculty access that so they can keep track of their benefits as well. Another mm -hmm. question I guess, uh, in terms of gathering information, in terms of employment, I think the marketing mm -hmm. comments that are very important. Okay, I just got there. Is that anything to look at? Does that kind of information to help you know, that, and other students have the system that they find when they talk about it? It's very important that it's like a type that goes up with Cosmos, not looked at moving forward. So, will that piece be addressed as well? So, uh, the, um, the, uh, yeah, no, Derek's next question is about so, what about the comments that you type in that are seen to be lost? Will that be addressed? And my understanding is. The short answer is no, <laughs> uh, that the appointment system is so was largely, if this is the right word, imposed, like not the appointments themselves, but how they're done. You know, they didn't get a lot of choice in the details of that. So, so I don't know if there's any plans to change that. Um, yeah. So the, the appointment system was created during COVID so that we could kind of schedule people because with everybody being partially on campus, we didn't want people coming and showing up and nobody being there. So it probably just needs to be enhanced. And no one was aware of that until someone told us. <laughs> <laughs> they can comment then and we didn't see the comments. So we can take that back to have that updated and see if it can be addressed or maybe just remove if it's not going to be done at this point because I'm not sure if they're going to develop that anymore right now. But we can most definitely carry that back. So any feedback that you give us is great. We will always carry all feedback back to see if things can be addressed. Now, when it comes to Benelogic, Benelogic is only accessible to full time employees right now because there are no part time benefits in that portal for part times. So with the robust portal like that, we just don't want to have it open for people to just go in and mess with. Because we don't want somebody to be accidentally enrolled in something that they're not supposed to be in because that can jeopardize our content. Okay. But if there's benefits that you are concerned about, by all means, everything is also posted on the MAPCC portal. <coughs> and you have access to that. And if there's something you have questions about, you can talk that way. Um, other questions. So we, we have reached the question uh, portion um, of the session, and we were going to take questions, depending upon how many questions were, we were then going to plan on breaking out into uh, Kaiser and um, Care First, just discussion and feedback sessions. But now, if you have questions or feedback about your benefits of a general nature, now would be the time. And I do want to thank Mary Dutter, who is taking notes. Uh, while we do this presentation, so thank you, Mary. Um, but if you have any questions now or comments or feedback, now would be a great time uh, in addition to the, um, the questions we've already got. Okay, I'm prepared for the system is special to come up. Even in part time, for two years, non stop. And just what am I going to do? I'm having to send my folks to send the charity, but I've created time. Uh, that both come to improve when we get to get PG. But I think that's there. I don't think we can just pick them up. But yeah, no, I think uh, as a committee member, I think that's a perfect thing for us to look at. Is so somebody who's been here 22 years, you know, is certainly very loyal to the college, is a, a huge asset to the college, and currently has no benefits that at least are more of the health, you know, the, the, I would say the more critical benefits that. All faculty and employees are interested. In. So, so my recommendation is for part-time faculty and their meetings to develop what type of benefits you're interested in and bring us that that feedback so that we can take them forward to see if there's anything that can be offered. I can't say I, I can tell you right now we're too far out there for medical. That's not something that would happen right now because that's a big benefit. And that would have to go 
through many layers to get free. That's not something that we can just flip on. But the same way we have tax shelters available to part time employees, part time, well called adjunct, everyone's able to enroll in a supplemental retirement plan and shelter money if you choose to. But there are some benefits that are mandated, like real estate retirement and the optional retirement. All of those are mandated benefits that we have criteria that have to be met for you to enroll in. Those are things that we have control over because those are mandated in real estate. But um, other benefits, please, by all means, just bring them forward. Yes, can I ask questions? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this has been like 25, 30 years. But um, let's say you know, we get a good competition. When you do that, can you adopt just a year? That just wants to come forward. Right. Forward to right. Year, that year. has not been discussed okay. or brought to the table to be discussed. But that's exactly the kind of thing that faculty that had employees in, in general who have been working for the time would be interested in. Um, so, yes, so let's. We'll, uh, we'll bring that forward as well. Question in the back, Kim? So I think the general question, I thought this discussion, maybe we would cover retirement and the 401 uh, board and all that. Is that a benefit discussion or do, is that a, a separate? Like, is it, does it still go through the EPT, which is the general? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You just don't have time. Yes. To talk if if you yeah. have a general question, by all means, we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Anytime you have any type of benefit session, it's going to result in other questions. Of course. So and that was what we talked about. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's always the door for other questions that other people have. So I only that's why we came because we wanted to support you. Okay, so next question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um so I'm I have I, I just want to say something about the um requirement on full time faculty. So the pension plan. I wonder yeah, is is there any option for me to increase my donation? Now, I've been full time now five years. I've been in college for nine years. Can I do that automatically, or do I have to wait for open enrollment, or is that not an option? Okay. When it comes to your primary retirement, which is either your Maryland State or your optional retirement, it's Maryland State. Yeah. Okay. Maryland State is a mandatory 7%. And that's it. That's it. Okay. If you want to shelter more money, I, I have the board. I mean, yes, and you can up that at any time and you can enroll it at any time. You do not have to wait till open enrollment to open up a supplemental retirement. So I have supplemental, but I would I want I'd rather get more to I don't to the Maryland State. Yeah, yes. I don't Maryland I lost, State is a lot of money, like then you look good, I guess. Yes. Because it's not money. It all lost. It hurts. So mm -hmm. my retirement plan is way too off now because of all the money I lost in my four fifties through. What was that like? Then it had to, and now it's a little bit. So, yeah. I was just yeah. hoping. <laughs> so, I think there are other options for. No more choices when it comes to Maryland State. That's the best. I think I need to um, other um, companies. Yeah, we have four companies. We offer four companies. For more for a reason. Yes, so I don't think we have a little bit more to join a different one. Okay, and what I said for the point that we need to do that. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Next question. So, um, speaking of retirement, how do the medical benefits carry over? Or once you retire, are you strictly Medicare, or can you maintain your your care first? Your care first. Okay. With the retirement, you have to have worked for the college full time for ten consecutive years going into retirement to carry your benefits. Okay. If you're under age sixty five, your current coverage will carry into retirement. But once you turn 65 on your 65th birthday, you're required to pick up Medicare A and B and go into one of the Medicare Advantage plans, which is United Healthcare and Kaiser. So you would not be able to keep the care first after age 65. And about what how much is the um, United Healthcare per month? United Healthcare currently is $32.10 a month. And can you carry that over for your spouse or yes. is just the employee? Spouse and the employee. Okay. Now, I know spouse, if the, the employee dies, the spouse loses all. Yes, the spouse loses coverage if you previously the spouse. Right. But the spouse would have a year to change coverage. Okay. Because it's that open enrollment period for Medicare. So you said United Healthcare is about $35 a month. $32. $32. Okay. 
I had kind of a follow up question to this. Mm -hmm. So the 10 year mark starts with Adam. So I came on as a emergency hire full time, but I wasn't considered real full time. But so, you were full time and you carried minutes. Right. So, so that counts. But, but according to the GCC, I've only been an employee full time for five years. Um, because my know. emergency contract signed in 2014, my right. full time contract was signed to like 2018. So does that 10 years? Did you have any break between no. the emergency? Well, then, uh, so that you're all full time. The only time you will not be counted consecutively is if you're hired as an emergency contact one semester, then you skip and go back to adjunct for a year or oh. a semester. That's when your time is all divided up. But when we go to total your full time benefit eligible years, we look at all your full time services. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, back to her question really quickly. Did you say at age 65 you can no longer have um, care first? Yes, as a retired, as a retired. not as an active employee. <laughs> 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 not as an active, uh, not as a retired, but as an active employee, you can remain in your primary plan because you're here actively working. And you're not even required to pick up your Medicare B until you get ready to retire. Mm -hmm. And I started here at part time, so mm -hmm. can I contact your department to find out how, how, where my time is accumulated, or yes. did I contact the state? No, mm -hmm. when it comes to retirement and calculation, you contact the state mm -hmm. because the state is going to have all of your service, regarding mm -hmm. including service that you had at other institutions or the school board. Mm -hmm. So first, I want to pick it back. You said the state gives you what seven percent? Seven percent is what you contribute right now into the state retirement if you're enrolled in the state retirement. Right. If you're enrolled in the optional retirement, which is the TFRF or the fidelity, there's seven and a quarter percent is contributed to your account from the college. So there's no contribution from you at all. You add it to the supplemental to the state. When they calculate, they see that nice form or you know, whatever. Is that including the supplemental amount as well? No. Okay. So when, that, when you're contributing into the real estate retirement, depending on whether you're in the five year vesting or in the 10 year vesting, okay. that's it. Okay. 10 year vesting. It's going to show you your calculation. Once you're vested, any match that comes from the state will be calculated into your calculations when you get your statement. And actually, you don't send statements anymore. They send you a little postcard oh, when right. you go online and so, your own state. So those money, <laughs> and they keep a period of time. And if it expires, you got to call them. They got to resend you the stuff. That's the credit. Those money that I put supplemental in, they're like, that's on it. That's like an actual ask flow. So yep. when they give you your pension, you just also have this other money. Yes, you do. Okay. That's why it's good to open up a supplemental plan because you have more control over that plan. You can, with, with um, real estate retirement, it's a defined contribution, it's a flat amount, it's guaranteed money. But if you want to gamble and look at um, high risk option or <laughs> moderate <laughs> option, or, you know, it's like, who wants to spend it lost for much money back, back there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you, you may want to look at more guaranteed plans, you know, in your supplemental plans. Yes. So, we're going to back to her uh, comment. Um, for a person that came here from finance, I would suggest contacting the money management service and let them reallocate their funds to a stable value right. fund. The point of, you, can, you have options for it when you select what you want to invest in. I know we all have seen our retirement plans shift. If you were making a lot of money because you were investing in more risky investments and you were getting higher returns. And now that the market is changing before that money continues to deplenish, I would call the money management company and ask them to move you over to a low yield, uh, stable value fund so that you're not in that space where if the market's going up and down, you're going to see this drastic shift. I mean, you're talking probably when the market is doing well, you'll probably only make you know one or two percent, but at least it's your money, you know that it's there and it's not you know moving as fast as it should. And when the market does bad, you're still going to have, yeah. Is there another? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, are they going to ever give out any work in that in the real estate? You said you can actually get stay with that. No. It's kind of in the room of a name. At one point, it used to be. <laughs> at one point, it used to give you one year 
to go opt out and go back into the state. They stopped that about okay. uh, okay. okay. two thousand eleven is when they stopped that. So if you once you opt out of your own state retirement, you can't go back in whether it's here, whether it's in another institution, another state, another county, it doesn't matter. You cannot go back in. And um the only way you would be able to secure a position that does not qualify for it. Yeah, that's a question for Vanna. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> as far as I'm learning a lot of this, thank you. <laughs> um, so where would I find information? And, and I'm sure it's out there about how medical benefits go after you retire. Like I was, I, I, I know I didn't do a complete search, but would that be in the benefits guide? Not that benefit guide. We actually have a retirement benefits guide, and we can have that posted on the portal. We usually don't because retirees don't have access to the internet, <laughs> so there's no need to post it. But we can put it out there so if people want to just generally look at it. There's no problem at all. Yeah, no, because I think, and I'm I'm in this camp, but I think a lot of people are thinking of retirement, even though for me it's 15 years away, at least, depending on how things go, right? Um, no, that'd be great. Other questions? So if there are no other questions, we still do have about 10 minutes left. Um, uh, and, and before I do this, first off, let me say, if questions come up afterwards, and you think they'd be good for Laura and I, please feel free to email us. Of course, as Dean has already said, if you have questions that are more appropriate for them, please uh, email them. And um, But the next thing I'd like to do is uh, for about the next 10 minutes, I just like to break up into um, Kaiser versus Care First health benefits and just get some feedback specific to those health plans. Um, I have, uh, through my wife, Kaiser, so I would be the one to talk to about Kaiser and give feedback to, and Laura has Care First. And I know from speaking with Sabrina that it is 80% of people and at PGCC who take the health benefits do have care first. And 20%, so my group might be small. Um, actually, let's just take a quick poll. So uh, how many people have care first in the room? Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. And how many people have Kaiser? <laughs> and both, yes. both vendors are here today. Oh. They have tables out in the lobby. So if there's questions that you have in reference to something, we do have both vendors here on campus. And the plan is outside as well. The Kaiser Mobile Band, anybody can take the shop. Mm -hmm. Mara, could you have a question in the back? Sorry. So I choose here first because I what I wanted to choose. Um, I provide so that and do whatever I want to do. Whereas Kaiser is then like they decide if they don't recommend you to somebody or study the psychology plan that was my understanding. So what did people choose Kaiser? What are the latest benefits of Kaiser versus the plan like here first? <laughs> so yeah, no, so uh in the front here, yeah. Yeah, I would say for me, um, it was easier to go to one location for all services and we wanted to go to uh all across the first Georgia's county to one position for this and another doctor for this for this. Everything for me is at the Lago Center. Um, and I can get all my services there. One thing I don't like though is the doctors there aren't as personable. Um, I do sort of get a feeling of uh, 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 a cog on the wheel coming in and out. Um, they're just trying to sort of service you. Although my new primary doctor is a lot better, but I sort of have to fight. This is for someone who's a little bit more better. Okay. Okay. That is the only time I have needed a doctor to go to. Mm. And I had actually came here in a hotel, and my foot was swollen and a dizzy. And then the, I went to the doctor, they said, You just need to exercise. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> never to do, but because the doctor did not refer me to x ray or MRI, I suffered and I did for several months. 
and I went to India, got my MRI done. It solid blackout cash which was five thousand rupees less than hundred dollars here, and I found that there was a severe damage to my stomach. So I was basically on the mercy at the mercy of the doctor, and that's what I did not like. And if this person does not to family or something, I'm just not able to go anywhere. So that's why I went, but I thought that like, some of you are very savvy. I know that you chose Kaiser, so I wanted to know what was your reason. So thank you. Yeah, no, and I can tell you why I chose it. It's through my wife's um, employment. <laughs> they pay for half of what they are here. So, yeah. they, they, so uh, half for family. Yeah. I would say uh, the perspective of someone who's been a paramedic uh, in Pittsburgh County for 25 years, we cringe. We have to go by. Just after the situation, not knowing what we're going to get when we get there. Patients that are having full fledged heart attacks and heart attacks. And they don't have IV started. They don't have, I mean, it's consistent in our opinion. Substantial. And, and my mother has a new teacher in a whole other part of Washington County with the question of the They're very inflexible, so it's really hard to get like a second opinion or a second situation. I've had that happen in a very public country. I guess we can go here first. I was going to say Kaiser has a cost savings savings model. I even had a Kaiser doctor years ago say, "Yeah, you know, preventative care they're great, and they they're probably great for a lot of other things, but they can admit you know, we try to save costs for, for our patients and in the system as much as we can." So, you know, it's something. I mean, it's something you do have to take the initiative. There is the advantage of just having a pool of doctors that are available to you that you don't know who you're going to see any given day, but you do have the option to still pick and choose. You're not mandated to whatever doctor that's in you. I've had my sister in and out of the hospital and she gave me great treatment. I gave birth to my child through Kaiser and it was excellent. So I guess I just want to, you know, every case is different. So I'm sure the story. Everyone, but this all good stories as well as bad as you. Yeah, that's my experience too. You have to be very proactive if you're done today. Then you can get good stuff. Uh, Oh, it sounds like though many people are happy with care first. How many people are happy that they with care first? Good. No, that's useful data. So. Yeah. Well, um, So we are trying to increase transparency of processes on this campus. If you have a comment or question about faculty, salary, or benefits, or even if you're not faculty, let us know. We are interested in getting more information out to all employees. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'll give Thank 